Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It, tucking the hair behind my ears again. It is right at about six o'clock on Friday evening and I have been so busy today. I'm actually ready for a nap. Um, usually my body is still alert. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyway, I am like physically tired today, but like my mind is like, oh, la, 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 la. I um, just got done filming. This is my sixth video. I just got done filming five videos when I got home today and I thought, I don't know. Maybe I'll just sit outside and read. It's a beautiful day. Maybe I'll catch up and finish the rest of Amazing Race that I started last night. Maybe I'll just take the day off. Maybe I won't even vlog. And then I end up, you know, filming six vlog videos of six vlogs. Six videos. The only channel that I did not film on today was my reality TV channel. And I was actually planning on doing that as well once I got started. Once I get started, I almost can't stop. It's like crazy. So... Let me tell you about the last 24 hours. Oh my God, here's my thumbnail. The last 24 hours. Well, the last uh, 10 minutes, I was uploading my videos and I just made some coffee. Actually, this mug is so big. This is from that Swig brand. I think I mentioned them in a video. It was either them or Corks. I think it was Corksicle that sent me a bunch of these mugs, but I love this mug so much. Well, not they didn't send me this one. I think I bought this one and then they sent me a bunch of those mugs like years ago, um, but I love the corksicle ones too. But anyway, this mug is so big that I, for another video earlier, I made a cup of coffee because I did my PO unboxing and it's, I think it's either Anisia or Anissa sent me a box of McCafe blueberry muffin K-Pods. And so I made a cup of it, but it only like went to like here on the largest thing, and it was so good. So it was it had kind of like cooled down a little bit. So I put in, I made another one on top of it, and so you can see this is two cups. So it smells so good. I mean, it literally smells like a fresh blueberry muffin. It's so delicious. So anyway, I thought I would come out and talk to you guys for a little bit because Alex is uh, inside on a very serious Zoom meeting. <laughs> Inside. He thought he had to go to the meeting, but they changed it to a Zoom meeting instead. So he's upstairs with Boo Radley in bed having a Zoom meeting. And um, I'm getting all my videos up. I actually have the Peterisms video up is already, it's up already. And my Peter Does Stuff video is up already posted. My drama video, I have to like put in all the stuff, like the description box and whatever, and then it's ready to go. My review video is, is uploading currently, and my booktube video is uploading currently. I did a Audible haul, a huge Audible haul over there. I didn't even do all the books I could have done, because I was like, if you guys want to hear more, I've got like 10 or 20 more. I could do like a three-part series. Two, I, I said I could do another video, but it actually could be like a three or four-part series. I mean, because I bought so many Audible books since the last Audible haul that I did. So go over there and check that out. I also actually talked about a couple of the books for Peter's Book Club for next month. So I gave like three or four options and asked people what they thought over there. Um, I, this is my third video that I posted on my Peter Books, uh, my Peter Likes Books channel this week. And I, I really missed being over there. And I'm so happy that I'm posting consistently again. Um, so that's my plan for like April and May and going into the summer is to like post consistently on all my channels. I think what I'm going to have to do... You know, there are some days where I feel, like, super inspired. You know where I was going back and forth where I was like, I don't feel like filming at all or I film whatever. I am, like, very happy right now on most days filming either just, like, a drama video and a vlog or filming, like, four videos. And those four videos are usually my drama channel, my vlog, my Peterisms channel, and my Peter Dust Stuff channel. Um, but I think what I'm going to do, my plan going into the sum spring and summer is going to be doing those four videos and then like some days instead of Peterisms and Peter Does Stuff do like review and reality and kind of switch it out from day to day. On, except for on those days that I feel like filming on every channel or six and seven channels. I'll just do that. Because um, like today, I, I when I came home, I thought, I never would have thought like on my way home that I was, I thought I'm going to film a vlog and take a nap. I didn't think I was going to film a drama video. And so I just sat down and I well, actually, I think I filmed my Peterisms video first today, and then I just was like, oh my god, I'm like, oh, well, I was so tired this morning, and then I was awake. So last night, Alex and I, we finished watching Truman Capote versus the Swans. It was fantastic. Um, 
it's always interesting to me when people will like say on a video like I know that like not everybody I, I guess I just because there's so many people that post consist or comment consistently that I'm just kind of like under this assumption that like most people that watch my vlogs watch them regularly but there's like some shows that I, I talk about pretty regularly that I watch like the Swans versus Truman Capote versus the Swans. I mean, we've watched that since it, the first episode came out, and it was so funny because I got a comment yesterday, and the, somebody said you should watch Truman Capote versus the Swans. And I was like, I feel like I mentioned that a lot over here. I mean, I understand there's people that can't. I, I don't mean that in any kind of mean-hearted way. I, I know there's people that like you know don't watch every vlog of mine, but I thought that was kind of funny because every once in a while people like recommend things to me. It's like it's one thing if it's like something I talked about two years ago, but like I feel like some of these things I've talked about a lot, <laughs> you know, like so it's always like. Like, somebody, and I felt like this was a trolling comment, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I, I asked for um, suggestions on my Peter Likes Books channel the other day about four cozy mystery series, and somebody said, you should read the Miss Fortune series. You would love it. And I was like, <laughs> I talk about it, like, in every other video. But anyway, it just cracks me up. I don't know why. Like, I don't see that as, like, you know, whatever. I just, those comments just crack me up because I'm like, because then there's other people that are like, you talk about the same show so much. I'm like, well, I talk about them so much that some people don't even know that I'm watching them. So, I don't know. I guess it just means I should just talk about whatever I want to talk about. And it's, if it's overkill or people have never heard of it before, I guess it's whatever. But anyway, so we finished uh, Truman Capote vs. The Swans last night. Fantastically done. It's, it's one of Ryan Murphy's best series he's ever done. But it's very, very sad. It's very, very sad. It's a lot about alcoholism and... The women that played the swans, Naomi Watts is unbelievable in it as Babe. And um, and then Diane Lane plays Slick. I mean, they're all fantastic. Chloe Savini as CZ Guest, um, who I've been kind of intrigued with forever. She's fantastic. And then, who's the one that dated Harrison Ford? Calista Flockhart. She's in it. And she plays... Uh, Lee Roswell, Roswell, is that her name? Roswell, like from the, well, the air aliens are from. Roswell, Roswell. They're all of them really, really good. Jessica Lang is in it. She plays his mother, like in dream sequences. The guy that plays his friend slash boyfriend, Jack, is so good in it. Molly Ringwald as Joe and Carson is really, really good as well. But I feel like Molly, I love Molly Ringwald so much, but I feel like she always plays Molly Ringwald. I mean, she, I feel like in everything she's ever been, she's been the same person. She's a little bit different in this, but it was good. It's just really, really sad. And, um, I mean, it's about, like, the whole story is basically how he just uses their lives and writes about it so that he can get fame. Um... But at the expense of losing their friendship. But then what he realizes was the fame was never worth it. The friendships were more important. And that's really the whole story. But I didn't ruin it for you because that's like from episode one. You know that that's what's going to happen. Um, it's beautifully done. It's beautifully shot. The costumes are gorgeous. Um, Alex or Tanya or somebody told me that all the costumes they wear in there are like original vintage pieces. I didn't know that. Um... Chloe Savini, who I love. I've loved her ever way back in the day when she was in that movie Kids. And she's been in so many different things through the years. I love her. She's fantastic. And uh, it's just so weird sometimes watching, like, seeing her in something. I mean, she's, like, my age, you know? And um, she was in some show. Not the reality show Sister Wives, but Big Love or something like that. I think Caroline used to watch that back in the day. So, anyway, then Alex went to bed after that. And did we watch something else? Did we watch a Watch What Happens Live or something after that? No, he went to bed after that, and then I watched, well, I read a little bit and listened to my audiobook, talked to Tanya on the phone, and then I watched Survivor from this week, because Caroline was texting me, and she's like, Hunter's going to win the whole show, and I'm like, she's like, it's so good tonight, and I'm, or this week, and I was like, okay, I was like, did Hunter do something, I mean, I like the guy Hunter that's on the show, I'm like, did he do something that's... There must be some huge thing that happens on the show. <laughs> there wasn't anything huge that happened on the show, especially not with Hunter. I'm like, where did she get that from? So anyway, and then she was watching Amazing Race, too. So I hadn't started Amazing Race. It came on. So I started watching it last night. 
Um, I only got, I was kind of surprised it's only an hour long. It's not an hour and a half long. Because Survivor, like the first two episodes were an hour and a half. Last season, it was like every week they were an hour and a half. Am uh, Amazing Race and Survivor. But I started watching Amazing Race and I got like halfway through it. I was doing like other stuff. I was like running around, cleaning the kitchen, putting this, organizing this. I was doing laundry last night. And at that point, it started getting late. Well, I had to get up early today because we had to leave here at like 10.30. I think we ended up leaving here at like 10.40, 10.45. But I got there at 10.40, I think. Um, so that Alex could take me to Tanya's, but she was at the kennel. So he took me to the kennel. And then Tanya and I went to the meeting. We got coffee on the way. But she like took some like... Back. She wanted to drive all these country roads there and back. It was so funny. She was cracking me up. She's like, I know you want to go on a long ride. I was like, I do I do kind of want to go on a long ride. It's nice. You know, it's a beautiful day outside. We listened to music and we laughed and stuff. So anyway, um, so I wanted to go to bed to get a good night's sleep. Well, I didn't take my medicine last night because I was like, I feel like I need to like skip a day or two with this medicine. Didn't drink a lot of caffeine again, none of that. I could not sleep to save my life last night, you guys. I don't know what it is. And I knew I had to get up. I had my alarm set for 9.05 and 9.15 because I wanted to get up and take a shower. And it was like five, it was like 4.47, 4.40, it was 4.47 because I can remember looking at the clock. And Boo Lat Bradley was standing up. He kept on jumping down and standing up. But when he does it like twice, I know he has to poop. And so... I got up and I took him outside and he like pooped right away. I brought him inside, got him a treat, got him back into bed and got him settled. But then it took me, you know, another hour to fall asleep and whatever. So I, I mean, I only got like two, two and a half, three hours of sleep last night. It was bad. I mean, I was so tired when I got up this morning. Tani texted me and she was like, I'm at the kennel. And I almost texted her back and was like, I'm not going to come. Because she said to me last night, she's like, if you wake up, because I was telling her, I was like, I'm so worried that I'm going to be so tired tomorrow if I don't get any sleep tonight. So I'm going to go to bed early so I can get, I said, because I can't go two nights in a row without any sleep. And I said, well, what's going to happen is I'm going to come home tomorrow after the meeting. I'm not going to want to film anything. I'm just going to want to sleep all day long. So, I mean, I only got like two and a half hours of sleep and I did, oh, I took a nap yesterday. I did take a nap yesterday after I got done vlogging. It was really nice. Oh, but that was a weird thing too. So we had really bad storms yesterday and I woke up, so I set my alarm. I laid down, I think it was like, I laid down at like 6.30 and I set my alarm for 8.30, but I woke up and it takes me like a good 20, 30 minutes to fall asleep. I woke up like right at eight and it was just starting to storm. It was so loud outside and I was having the weirdest dreams. I was at the house that I grew up in and it was Halloween and I could hear somebody whispering through the door and it was like, I knew it was like a ghost or a spirit and they were like, happy Halloween, Peter. And I was like afraid to go to the door and it was like dark outside and stuff. But there were like trick or treaters outside and people were knocking on the door saying trick or treat, but I didn't want to open the door because I knew it was like a spirit or a ghost. So I like looked out because the door that the house that I grew up in was like this huge, it was like really thick wooden door. At the top, it had stained glass in it, like glass in it, like just like these three panels that you could like see if somebody was standing there, you couldn't really see who it was. And so I saw that it was like kids trick or treating. So I opened the door and as I opened the door to like hand the candy, like the basket of candy, Boo Radley ran out. He was in my dream. And so he ran around the side of the house and the side of the house was where it like it went into the woods and then there was like this basketball court that came down, but that wasn't, didn't really exist back there. It was like this from off the house. And then there was these huge telephone cords that were like, this is the weirdest dream, you guys, in the entire world, that were like 200 feet, 100 feet in the air. And Boo Riley like jumped up and he was like going like this, like, <laughs> like holding on to him, like going around, like he thought it was fun, but I was like afraid he was going to fall. And then like one of my friends was like standing next to me and was like, happy Halloween. I was like, I can't look right now. I was like, Boo Radley's going to fall. I'm like really worried about it. And Boo Radley, like, he was like, all, he had like the, it was like, he was like a person. He had like this smile on his face. Like he was so excited. He just like dropped from this court. And then like, I caught him and I was like, oh my God. And then we went inside and then like, I fell asleep as soon as we went inside or I woke up as soon as I went inside the house. And when I woke up, it was like all these storms and Boo Radley was real scared and stuff like that. Like that was real life that he was scared. So I really only got like an hour worth of a nap. That's when I came downstairs and I like looked at the computer and did some stuff. I think I posted the vlog at that point or something like that. I can't remember what. No, it was, I don't think the vlog was done by then because the storms kind of messed with our internet and stuff. And so um, I did something. Oh, we came outside and we looked at the storm is what we did. 
Oh, the alarms were, that's what it was. So I came outside, I brought Boo Rally outside, and the alarms were going off for tornadoes, because there was tornado warnings in Indianapolis last night. And, oh, I talked to Tanya, that, I talked to Tanya then, and then I talked to my sponsor, and my sponsor was like, well, they're on the east side, they're not by us at all, which is so weird, because she and I don't live that close to each other. But she's like, they're on the far east side, the tornado. She's like, I've been watching the weather. So then I went inside, and Alex, I told Alex, I was like, it's real, it was like yellow outside. It was like, like what it looks like with tornadoes. If you've never been in tornado yellow weather, it gets like weird color, it's like yellow outside. And it's like real super windy, and then it just stops. And that's when you know it's like, tornado warning, it's real weird. Well, it did that. And so Alex came outside. Well, Alex was outside, all these people, all my neighbors were outside, they were all like looking at the sky and stuff like that. Hey! They were all looking at the outside and stuff like that, because the weather was so weird last night. So we did that, and then it just like stopped all of a sudden. And then we started watching the show, and as we started watching the show, it just like started like the the rain started coming down like nobody's business. It was, tonight, it's, but Tony said we're supposed to get like bad weather again tonight. It's sunny and nice outside right now, but I think it was yesterday too. So or was it cloudy? I don't remember. But anyway, so yeah, so I only got like two and a half, three hours of sleep last night, and I woke up and I was so tired. I was like Peter just force yourself to go to this meeting. You love this meeting, you haven't been, I used to go to this meeting like all the time. It was like a noon meeting that they had every single day and I used to go there, you know, five days a week. On the weekends they were at different times but I used to go to this noon meeting five days a week and it was always the same people and I went there every day for, for two years. You know, unless I was out of town or something like that and that was when I first started coming back in going to meetings again. And I was like, please have fun with Tanya, just, just go. And so, took a shower, Got ready. I had like this whole cute outfit I was gonna wear, but it was like cold today. It was like 40, I looked on the weather and it was 47, so I just wore this like hoodie and I didn't do my hair. I just took a shower and washed my hair, put a hat on. <laughs> Nobody cares at a meeting, you know? So we went to the meeting and it was so great. It was so fun. Tani was laughing. She was like, I'm not bringing this meeting. Okay, so I was talking to somebody, this woman that we're friends with that I had seen for a while. She sat next to us. This meeting's kind of big and, um, well, Tiny said it was half the size that it usually is. She said it's usually like 40 people, 40 or 50 people, and today it was like 25 people, 20, 20 25 people. I like it because it's a good mix of like old timers and people. I mean, there's people in there that have like, there were like two people in there that were new. There's people in there that have like six months, a year, 90 days, all the way up to one of my friends has like 40 some years she was there. Uh, this other guy has like 47 years that's there and a couple other people have like 10 or 15 years longer than Tanya and I. So I love that. There's a good mix of people in there. So anyway, I was talking to this, um, this one woman that we're friends with, we've been friends with forever and I hadn't seen her in forever and so Tanya, it was like we were standing back before the meeting started, the three of us, and that friend of mine that always says, I fucking love you, Peter Mon, you know, she's the one that always says that to me and she also says to me, my sponsor used to say it too, but she's the one that says, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And so, she came in and I like, kind of like saw her out of the corner of my eye and she like, she's like loud, I love her, she's like her person, she just does not care, right? And she's like, Peter Mon, I fucking love you! <laughs> So like all these people turned so like I went over ran over and gave her a hug and and I then I hear Tanya and she's like I'm not bringing you to any more meetings you're just like a celebrity every time you come because nobody gets to ever see you because you don't come to this meeting anymore because I don't go to that meeting anymore because it's like far away from me so uh, like I mean to take an Uber it's like 35 minute drive so um, unless I go with Tanya like I don't go to that meeting very often and she doesn't always go to that meeting so. It was really fun. I got to see a lot of people that I hadn't seen and met some new people and it was just really, really nice. Um, they're actually putting together a book. Like a couple people in recovery are putting together a book. This just means the world to me. Of So my old sponsor, the one that I had the longest, he was really known for saying like very wise things, but like... So my old sponsor always was like flannel, he was short, very thin, looked like a truck driver, wisest man I ever met, always wore a trucker hat, like a union trucker hat, and then um, like a flannel shirt and like jeans, like every single day. And, um, but he was real known for like saying real wise things, but like in really kind of like layman's terms kind of ways, you know? Um... Like, I can remember one time, well, I'm not gonna, anyway, that's, 
personal story. So anyway, they're putting together a book, like, of, like, pictures of him and, like, all of his, like, sayings and stuff like that. I saw, like, this flyer for it. I thought that was really cool. But anyway, um, I miss him so much. He was such a good guy. I was telling Caroline yesterday because she was saying that she, like, met somebody and they were talking and he, like, shared with her that he was sober and how much time he had had and he had, like, uh, like a year or two or something like that. And she was like, oh, my cousin's sober. And I said, and your aunt. And she was like, I know, but your mom's gone. I go, it's really important that people know, especially people in early sobriety, that people die sober. Like, like that's an important story to tell, that, like, my sponsor died sober. My mom died sober. My other sponsor died sober, you know? Both of those were my two past sponsors. But it's really, I mean, I've had so many friends of mine that have overdosed and died or, you know, whatever, gone back out and died. But I have so many friends of mine, too, that lived sober 10, 20, 30, plus 40 years and died sober. Like, great lives. Like, that's important to tell that story, too, and not just get, you know, I always seem to tell the story of, like, I've gone to so many funerals of people that have died from addiction. That is true, but it's also important to remember that I've gone to a lot of funerals of people that have died sober. You know, and I think because to give people hope that you can live the rest of your life sober, you know? And so I was telling Caroline that. She's like, that's really good. I never thought of that before. I was like, yeah. So that was great. We went to the meeting, and then... Afterwards, we were talking to people and joking around and stuff like that. And then, um, Tanya drove me home. And she was like, I want to take all country roads. Well, it was like every country road that we took to, like, get out. There's not really, like, a good a lot of good country roads from there to here. And so, it's like, if, if this is just, it was like, ooh. I mean, it, if, it, it's, if it's, like, a 35-minute drive or, you know, it... It probably took us an hour and a half to get home. And every road to get over, like, was detoured because they were doing construction on it. We had such a good time. It was so funny. We had such a good time today. Today was such a good day. I, I was sitting there. I was telling Tiny this on the way home. Like, I mean, I could do it. I could take an, I could get up every single day and take an Uber there and whatever. But, like, I just miss that. That period of my life was... Such a pure, a pure is probably a really good word, but like a pure happy moment, like in my life, you know, like I was telling Tanya, I wasn't working a lot and, you know, it was before I was on YouTube and I would get up every single day. Like I can remember I was going, when I came back into going to meetings, I've shared the story on here before, but there were four years that I didn't go to meetings. And it was a combination of things that made me la leave, you know, my mom passing away. I was kind of angry. I well, I wasn't kind of. I was very angry at God about that, even though that doesn't make sense in r retrospect. I mean, just, it's irrational. But I was, I didn't really know who to be angry at. God made the most sense, right? He took the one person that I loved the most. But then I got in an argument with somebody at my home group, and I just was like, I'm done. These people don't know me. I don't care. I just put a lot of distance between me and the program. And, um... So there were four years that I didn't go to meetings. I've shared the story a ton on here, but I never said I didn't need it. I never, like, I've had a lot of friends of mine, that, especially people that I worked with in treatment back in the day, that'd be like, I don't need those meetings anymore. And I've never said that. I've never felt that. I've never felt like I didn't need to work steps or have a sponsor or have the connection or whatever. I just was, I was really honestly scared to go back. I was terrified to walk back in the rooms, you know? I was afraid that people would be like, where have you been? Like, it's been forever. I don't know why I thought that, you know? But I... That's not what I walked into. I walked into, like, total love and acceptance. It was amazing. And, um, like, like a day hadn't gone by, you know? And people were so happy to see me. But I also had to do a lot of work with getting to know newcomers and putting my hand out there and shaking hands and stuff. But, you know, that was... So that was, I don't know, 12 years ago in January or something like that. It would have been 12 years ago this past January. 11 or 12 years ago. I think it was 12 years ago. And that was when I was standing in the kitchen and I just was like, I felt like my life was falling apart. I felt like my marriage was falling apart. I felt like I didn't know what to do next with my life. I just didn't really know it. I had no direction. And I just felt lost. I had no emotional sobriety and I had no spiritual foundation. I wasn't even sure if I believed in God anymore or any kind of spiritual belief, whatever. I just was kind of done. I was telling Tanya this today. It's like a really scary place. Like, 
when you know you're not going to pick up and drink, and you know you're not going to also end it all, because that's just not on your plate. I mean, I understand that for other people, but that wasn't on mine. And so your only option is to continue to live in pain, because you're not willing to go back and do the work to be sober, emotionally sober as well. So... Where that's worse than anything. That was worse than when I was using, because using was at least a solution to my problems. It was muting it, you know? And that was where I was. I just was like, what's next for me? There's nothing next for me. Like, what's the point, you know? But I wasn't a, a place, I've never been in a place where I was, I mean, I have, like, but I've never thought it all the way through of just being done, you know? And, um... I don't know, that's why I broke that day and I called Tanya and I was like, will you take me to a meeting? And she said, I've been praying for four years for you to ask me that question. And that's what started it. That night we went to that meeting and that very next day I went to a, a new meeting and, um, but it was at a different place. And then I started going every single day. I came home after that, I think it was that night. I listened to like this like this speaker lead on the way home, and it was, this, I, I heard this, it was early on, I think it was that first night that I heard, it was a woman that, she got sober young, at like 18 or 16 or something, and she'd been sober for like 10 or 12 years, and she said something, and I thought, she said it's hard to fall off the wagon when you're sitting in the middle of it, and like it's, those are the kind of things my old sponsor used to say, stuff like that. It meant so much to me to hear that, like what she was saying was, this whole idea of falling off the wagon, starting to drink again. Like, it's hard to do that if, like, you're really enmeshed in recovery and you're talking recovery and you're surrounded by recovery. And I knew, like, in that moment, I don't know how I didn't know that the four years before, but I was like, if I don't change something, I'm going to end up drinking. Like, I probably am, right? I couldn't see it, but I thought it. And the way I was living was worse than that anyway. And so I was like, you need to be in the middle of this. And so that's when I came home and I told Alex, you know, like... I have to do this thing and like I'm either going to save myself and then our marriage is going to be saved as a result of it because we'll be able to get help or I'm going to save myself and our marriage won't make it but either way I'm, I'm going to save myself and I have to do that and he was 100% supportive of it and so you know for two years I was going to a noon meeting Monday through Friday and an 8 o'clock meeting Monday through Friday Saturdays I was going to I think Sunday was, was the only day that was different. I was going So it was Monday through Saturday that I was going to a noon and an 8 o'clock. And then Sundays, I was, there was an 11 a.m. meeting. It was split. It was like a spiritual meeting on Sundays. And then I went to um, an 8 p.m. speaker meeting on Sunday nights. And for two years, I did that. I think, unless Alex and I were like watching movies or something like that one night of the week, I would do it. But like, he knew how important it was to me. And we even had like, well, like Friday night, so Saturday, okay, I think Friday nights I did not go to the meeting because Friday nights were date night. And then Saturday nights he would go out with his girlfriends and I would go and I went to this candlelight meeting and then we would all go to like Steak and Shake or Perkins or Denny's or something like that afterwards. Because that, the fellowship, which is what that's called when we hang out with people in recovery, that was really important to me. You know, after the noon, like, so anyway, and then on Sundays, I think that's when Alex and I started going to brunch a lot, and we would spend the afternoons together. Maybe I did go to the meeting on Sunday nights, and then I would come home, and we would go to bed and start it all over the next day, I feel like. I was very structured during that time. But, you know, the noon that I would go to, like, I would get there at, like, 11, 11.30, and I would, you know, drink coffee and smoke a bunch of cigarettes talking to people and, you know, made friends. I had, like, three or four really good girlfriends at that time that all of them had under two years, and we were hanging out. And one of my friends, she was going through divorce, and we would go get lunch, like, three times a week. And when her kids were with her, you know, ex-husband, she would go, or we would hang out go to a meeting together at night and then get dinner and... We used to go to, I mean, that was before I was a vegetarian. I can remember I used to go to, what was that restaurant called? Was it Chili's? And we would get, I would get the California Club, which is like turkey on a croissant. And we would get like chips and salsa. And we would go back to our house and listen to the Smith, Well, I Wonder. And we would just talk for hours and drink coffee. It was, it was a good, it was a good period of my life. It was, like, really, really structured, you know? And I needed that at that point. Tony always talks about how, like, she's like, you were a newcomer, like, at that point. Like, you were, like, you had just gotten sober. And I was, you know? I mean, at that point, I had, if I have 29 years now, and that was 12 years ago, so what? I had, you know, 17 years. But it was really, like, 
I was like brand new. You know, I hadn't gone to a meeting in four years and I come back in and I'm like right in the middle of it. I was speaking places. People were asking me to share my story a lot. Um, I was doing a lot of service work and you know, whatever. And it was great. I loved it. And being at this meeting today like really made me miss that a lot. I was like, I really just like miss like going there and you know, this one older guy always picks up the coffee pot and takes it around the room and pours people's coffee and stuff like that. And just seeing the people that, you know, I was friends with, like, really close. would see them every day, you know. It stopped. In fact, my one friend that I was talking to today that I hadn't seen her in forever, she was like, you never come to this meeting anymore. And I was like, no, I haven't been to it. You know, I went, I said a couple, I think it was like a month or two ago with Tanya, and I said, you know, whatever. And, and she was like, why don't you, I said, well, I don't drive, so it's really hard for me to get, she's like, why don't you drive anymore? And so I told her, I said, I told her about the accident. She's like, how did I not know that? You know, and I was like, I don't know. But, because most people that I know from recovery, like they've heard it from somebody else or they even, I, I mean, I talk a lot about it in meetings too. So people that sit in meetings with me, they like, I mean, I don't talk about it every share, but like it comes up a lot as far as like, you know, I've, I've talked about it a lot in meetings and um, remorse and guilt and things like that. So, and just emotional feelings and like leaning on God and the wheelbarrow analogy, you know, I mean, like, I, I think I talk a lot about God with it, but um, so anyway, yeah, I just, I miss it a lot. It made me like want to come home tonight and like listen to like a speaker lead and like watch a recovery. I was like, I haven't watched, tw somebody in there today was like, um, it was their 28th day. And I was like, oh, that makes me want to watch 28 Days. I haven't seen 28 Days in forever. But I love those recovery movies. Did you guys hear that single drunk female that was on Hulu that didn't get renewed? Which makes me really, really sad. I love that show. It was so good. I tried to watch that one show. Tanya said, I think Tanya said she liked it. It's called, like, The Milkman or something. It's on Netflix. I don't care for it. It's a couple seasons about somebody in recovery. They're, like, a recovery coach. I didn't like it at all. At all. Um, but I know other, it's just not really my humor either, but, um, I love that movie Clean and Sober, but every time I watch it, it makes me so sad. When a man loves a woman, it makes me sad too. I haven't watched that in a while. 28 Days with Sandra Bullock. She's fantastic in that movie. I love that movie. Um, so I might try to find some recovery movies done or whatever. So yeah, so I have to finish Amazing Race, too. And then I also will probably watch, because we usually watch the night that it comes out. If we Well, oh, so Alex has dinner tomorrow night. I didn't think he had anything this weekend, but he has a birthday dinner tomorrow night with three of his girlfriends. And it's actually three girlfriends that he hasn't seen in a while. Um, but I think two of them and their boyfriends are going to go for, like, the first part of his birthday trip, wherever we go with this. So... But their boyfriends aren't going to dinner tomorrow night. It's just like a girlfriend's dinner thing. So he's doing that tomorrow night. And then I asked him if he was going out afterwards. And he was like, I don't know. We haven't really figured it out yet. He was like, but I haven't been out in forever. He was like, so I would love to go out. I was like, go out. I'll we'll sit home and watch TV. Go out all night long. I'll listen to my audiobooks. Me and Lil Boo Radley will snuggle. It'll be a great night. You know, and then we'll hang out on Sunday and whatever. Um... So, yeah, so, but what's weird is, like, I'm tired, like, I could lay down and take a nap right now, but I could also, like, stay up for the next two hours and, like, read a book or whatever. I'm kind of surprised that I'm, I don't know, the, the meeting, like, gave me just, like, I felt so good after the meeting. The tree is starting to bud. Aww. I was talking to my neighbor across the street. She is heavily, heavily <laughs> heard in my drama video that I did today. If you like that, you would love it. Because she was out there planting flowers today. She went to the uh, that nursery soul events that I love where I get the special pops and stuff. And she did something called Pansy Roulette. They were selling pansies there. And it was like where you like paid to like... You spun, like, a wheel or something, and then, like, you picked up a pansy, and underneath it, it said, like, how much off, and she got 20% off all of her. She was so excited about that. I love this neighborhood so much. You guys have no idea. And then my other neighbor that was walking, she dog walks people's dogs, and so, like, she, like, she walks around here, like, ten times a day. She's really nice. She's probably, oh, she's probably my age or within three to five years older than me. She and I are probably real close in age. And she's single. And she actually has the exact, closer to the pool. There's like four four or five of them in the neighborhood that's the exact same model as ours, which is like the smallest unit in the neighborhood. She has one of the other ones. She's really sweet. And, um, 
but she walks her son's dogs and she walks some, there's a lot of mating, mating birds out here lately, but she walks um, her son's dogs, they're big dogs, and then she walks her dogs and she walks like three other people's dogs. And I said something to her today because she had this puppy and she said it's some kind of doodle. I don't know what kind of doodle it is. She's like, but I got to take it. She's like, I'm, I'm like house or dog sitting it, but it's staying, he's staying with me. And she said, I have to take it to obedience class every day for the next five days or all next week. And then she said, and I'm walking it and this dog was so, it was this black and white, like something doodle or whatever. And I went up and I think it was, she said it was a rescue because when I went up to like, I said, can I, can I pet him? And she was like, oh yeah. And so like, he kind of like, cow I like, I went like this and got down on his level and he started, and he like came over and smelled me, he smelled me and then he just like started barking like crazy. And she's like, he doesn't like men. She was like, she said something about the rescue. Um, the rescue told these people that, whose dog it is, he was five months old. He was so cute, you guys, he was so cute. And I was like, I could own like 20 or 30 rescue dogs. And she was like, I know I could too. She was like, but I don't have the, she goes, I could just walk them all for free since I do already. And I said, you don't get, you don't charge for what? She was like, no. She was like, I love to walk. She was like, so I just offer to walk people's dogs for free. I thought that was so nice, don't you? That's what I need to do. <laughs> but I liked it. Like people were saying in the comment the other day, there was like a huge, not a huge, but there was like three or four people talking about like, oh, why doesn't Peter take walks with Alex and blah, 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 whatever. Alex is not like a big walker anyway. Like when we're in like Mexico or whatever, he'll like walk on the beach. He enjoys doing that. But just to like walk in the neighborhood, like that's Alex likes to do. Like he likes to, he has to, he has to be doing something if he's gonna work out. Somebody just came home. I could hear him. He likes to do like hot yoga, Pilates, or something like that. So that's the number one thing. Number two is I like to listen to music or my audiobook when I'm walking. There's this one couple, and they like they walk. I mean, I walk fast when I walk. Like I'm like this when I walk. But maybe not with the swinging arms, but I'm just trying to give you an idea. But there's this couple that walks as fast as I do, and they're probably my age. And, like, they both have their AirPods in. And when I see them, because, like, I'll be, like, walking boo or whatever, and they're walking on the street. And she'll say something, he'll go, huh? And then he'll take his AirPod out, and then she'll go, I can't hear you. And I'm like, see, this is, no. It's like going to the casino. Like, Valerie and I know each other well enough that when we would go to the casino back in the day, like, we would play in the same section, but we would play, like, I mean, if, if there were two machines next to each other, we'd play next to each other. But if there weren't, I'd be like, hey, girl, how you doing? You know, you want a Coke, you know? But, like... I mean, it was, we would do our own thing. We didn't have a problem with that. Like, see, she's walking down here listening to her book or music right here. I live for that. I love it. Plus, I think it's, you know, good to just spend some time, like, in your own element and getting your peace and serenity and all that kind of stuff. I enjoy that. I know this doesn't sound crazy, but, like, if Alex was like, oh, I'll take a walk with you, I'd probably be like, I really want to listen to this book, you know? <laughs> Didn't we just lay in bed together? I think there's this like misconception that like Alex and I never talk or anything when we spend so much time together. <laughs> like sometimes too much talking, you know what I mean? <laughs> Plus we're getting ready to go on a vacation here before long, so I'm excited about that. And we'll walk like in Florida and stuff like around Miami and when we go, you know, on trips and stuff like that, we'll walk together. But he's not like, he's not somebody that wants to like put on his shoes and like go walking down the street, you know? My mom and my Uncle Dave used to walk a lot. He would come over here and they would walk around this neighborhood or went, they lived over here. She would walk over to his house and then we would walk and then she would go back there and they would have like coffee or she would have coffee with my aunt and stuff like that. I would love something like that. I'm trying to get somebody that I know that lives to live, move into this neighborhood so I can have me a good friend other than just one of my neighbors. Everybody is so excited about the pool being open. This one neighbor, I said something today, he acted like he didn't know what I was talking about, but like Caroline, Tanya, my neighbors or everybody's talking about the pool. We still got like two months. And I'm like, oh my God, I can like taste it already. I'm so ready for the pool to be open. It is a pretty evening. Tony said it's supposed to like pour down rain tonight. I'm like, where is that supposed to happen? So I don't have to get up early tomorrow, which I'm really excited about. And I haven't decided yet if I'm going to what I'm going to film. I'll probably at least film a vlog tomorrow because Alex is going out to dinner and I think his dinner is at like 6 or 6.30 or something like that. So I'll be able to start late and I won't feel like I'm in a hurry and I can sleep in tomorrow, you know? I Now I'll say this and watch, I'll film on every channel, but I have no intention of filming on every channel tomorrow. It, you know, 
I don't even know what I would do if I did a drama video tomorrow. I don't know. So we'll, I don't know. We'll have to figure that out later if I do it. But tonight, I can tell you, my plan is to watch, well, we'll watch RuPaul's Drag Race tonight because he has dinner tomorrow night. If not, we'll watch it on Sunday, but I think we'll probably watch it tonight. The thing is, we have to wait till 9 o'clock when it comes on. So we'll probably watch RuPaul's Drag Race tonight and the after show Untucked. I'll watch RuPaul's Drag Race UK versus the world tonight, or I'll save it till tomorrow. It just depends on how I feel what I want to watch. I am going to finish Amazing Race, so tonight. I'm definitely going to finish that. And then, because I'm like halfway through it. And then, I feel like I want to finish Life. Oh, oh, I know. I want to finish Life and Beth. I have four episodes left, so that's two hours. Because a couple of you mentioned it, I think, but then my friend Nikki said something to me about it. Apples May Fall, which Leah Moyerty, who wrote Big Little Lies, she wrote that. It just came out, and they released all seven episodes in a row. I don't know if it's on Matt. Oh, it's on Peacock. It's on Peacock. I looked it up. And um, I really, really want to watch it. It's, I think Annette Benning's in it. It's about... I read the book. I loved the book. It's about a couple, and they, like, own a tennis... They're, like, older, and they're, like, retired. But they owned, like, a tennis... Um, like a tennis center or tennis league, like when they were like, that's what they did as a job and they raised their kids all playing tennis and stuff like that. And then the woman goes missing. And so, yeah, I watched that other one that was with Nicole Kidman that was about that retreat. I was kind of glad, like when I watched the show, I thought the show was really, really good, but I was glad that I didn't read the book. I didn't think that I would like the book. Seven, Oh, Nine Perfect Strangers was what it was called. I liked the show. I thought the show was good. It was interesting. It was weird. If you guys remember me talking about it, I thought it was weird. All of her books were so different. I actually, like, with Big Little Lies, I liked the book better than I liked the show. And I have never read, I've never finished it. I've started it so many times. Her Husband's Secret, that's, like, on my list to, like, read soon. Um, and there's a couple of her other books that I want to read. So... I have a feeling Leo Mayer, and I've never read Truly Madly Guilty either, and I have that on Audible. I have a feeling, um, there's a couple authors that I want to get caught up on, like, all their books. Like, Leo Moyerity is one of those. I've wanted to do that for years. Taylor Jenkins Reid. I just talked about one of her books in my hall, my Audible hall today that came out last November, but I think it's a re-release. <laughs> and then Carrie Soto is back is the other one. And once I've read those, I'm like, I've pretty much read almost everything that she has that's, like, newer, that's out. Um, but I have a feeling, because Apples May Fall just came out as a show in Peacock, I have a feeling that Leo Mo Moyerity is going to release a book. I have a feeling it'll be the 1st of April, like, because the show will have been out for a week, and then she'll release the book. I have a feeling that, because usually when those shows come out, they release a book. It would be a smart, you know, marketing move if she was going to do that. So, if that, if the next Leo Moyerity book comes out, I really want to read that. So, um... They're just kind of an investment, because it's like 10 stories, and they all kind of like mold together at the end into one, but they're so, I mean, you want to talk about masterfully craft, crafted, and they're not really like scary thrillers, but I would still consider them thrillers, because you really have no idea what's going on. Um, so yeah, I'm so excited about listening to books and reading this summer and walking and going to the pool and stuff. It's just going to be such an enjoyable... I did this popcorn review, and there's all this popcorn. Not all this, but there's a couple pieces. And just, like, enjoying the spring and summer out here, listening to books. I'm, like, really into reading and listening to books right now. So, um, so yeah. So, I'll, but I also want to watch some true crime this weekend. I want to finish Murder on the Friday Night Lights, since I just finished Southern Gothic. I went to go look up that missing show that's on Hulu. I think it's on Hulu. Yeah. But each episode's only like 26 to 30 minutes. They're all like really short episodes. And I'm like, mm, no, this isn't what I thought it was gonna be. I almost feel like, and then people were telling me to like go in and watch Dateline. I, like when I go to watch a show, like I have to go in and like watch it from the very beginning all the way down. I can't just like pick and choose. Like I, if I, I have to start it from the beginning, go the way through. And the thing is, is that, do, first of all, do you think they're gonna put out another Unsolved Mysteries? I think I looked the other day and it still hasn't been renewed on Netflix, which is crazy to me because they're so good. But I still haven't, um, I got distracted by the Unsolved Mysteries thing. Did you notice that? But with, like, Dateline, I wouldn't know how to go in and pick out which ones I was going to watch. So I would have to watch it from the very beginning. There's, what, 42 seasons or something like that? Oh, I know what I was thinking about. The program. So many people have asked me if I'm going to watch the program. Um, 
stories that are about, like, what was the one? I watched it on the way to Mexico that was about Hell Camp. Those abusive kind of stories like that, I like, I have a hard time watching those. Like, I, there's a, there's a couple things that I don't, like the Jeffrey Epstein stuff, I don't like to watch any of that. The R. Kelly stuff, I don't care to watch any of that. I don't like, I don't love watching those kind of documentaries and stuff like that. Um, I know I said this not too long and somebody else was like, I said I don't want to watch anything that's like really sad and tragic or something like that. And people are like, yeah, but you watch true crime. I mean, it's totally true, right? But there's some things for me that like, I don't need to be educated on. Like the murder mysteries that are true crime are almost kind of like whodunits and figure it out. When it's a story a bit of like kids and, and women being like horribly abused, like I, I just can't. Like I just... It is so sad to me to watch that. Like, I don't gain any kind of, like, entertainment enjoyment off of it. I don't really get any entertainment enjoyment, obviously, off of hearing somebody get murdered. But when it's, like, a true crime, like, whodunit, like, you're trying to figure it out, that part's interesting to me. When it's just somebody telling their story of how, like, they were horrifically abused... Like, it's like reading those books. What were those books back in the day? The Child Called It. Like, those books are so well done. Like, they're really good. But they're not, like, enjoyable reads. Those are difficult reads. Like, I would recommend those to somebody, at, like, to be educated on abuse. But I don't know that I would ever read them again. Like, I read them. I think they're by Dave Polson. I read them, and I'll, I don't, you know, I don't think I ever want to read them again. I feel like... The last time I mentioned him, somebody said there was something that came out of it. I don't know anything about his story. So I just know that I read, like the I think there's three. I think I read the first two and part of the third or something like that. I just remember, like, part of it where, like, the mother would, like, put the kid when he was an infant. The fo I think he was in foster care, like, on the stove. Like, I mean, it's just, like, I don't, I don't want to read stuff like that. Like, that's horrific to me. And all the other stuff, it's just, it's a lot, you know? And... There is some distance to me. I don't know why. Especially when it's, like, something that happened so long ago, like, in the 70s. Or when it's, like, a murder case that is, like, trying to be investigated and found out. Or, like, a missing persons case where you're, like, you don't know. But, like, that kind of stuff, I don't I don't like to watch it. I kind of steer clear of that kind of stuff. Um, I watched Hell Camp. I thought Hell Camp was good. I felt horrible for those kids. That I just felt like nobody was listening to them and whatever. And I know that this, the program is going to be another story like that as well. I saw. I watched the trailer for it. The trailer for it actually looks more interesting than the Hell Camp one. The Hell Camp one was well done too. I didn't. It was bizarre. I mean, it's just. I don't know. So I'll probably watch that. And then there's another one that's a conspiracy. I asked people if they had seen it, and a couple people were like, oh yeah, I watched it, it's good. It's like a political conspiracy one about political things through the years or whatever. Um, I'm not super interested in like politi political espionage. I don't read any of those. My Uncle Dave loved those political espionage books. I don't read any of the political espionage. It's kind of over my head if you want to know the truth. So I don't think it's about that, but it's like, it's about like national traders and things like that. I feel like it was something like that. Um... So, I don't know. Like, even, like, the religious stuff, like, like, keep sweet, pray and obey about, like, the LDS church and stuff like that. Even, like, where it got into abuse and, like, them marrying, like, 12-year-old girls and stuff. I just was like, I can't. Like, this is just, like, I, this is too much. Like, I know it exists and it breaks my heart and I don't want to stay stupid to it, but I also don't want to get consumed with it. I have a friend of mine, like, that's, like, everything she watches. Like, she is just, like, and, you know, is always recommending that to me kind of stuff but so I don't know what's the other one that's on Netflix it's called The Conspiracy there's like two that are coming out I always look up like February true crime releases March true crime releases and stuff like that so there's like two that are coming out that I want to see I miss the days of like the keepers and making of a murderer and stuff like that I mean those were so like, like the staircase the keepers was so good you like could not stop watching that one that was really really good but, see, that was one that was, like, so long ago that it feels like you're reading a book or something. You know what I mean? But that was fantastic. Those two older women that were, like, solving the whole thing, I lived for that. It felt like me and Tom Jean sitting in our kitchen trying to figure it all out. Yeah, I want another a true crime series like that. That's what I miss. Well, you guys, I think 
I heard Alex come downstairs, so I think that his uh, meeting is probably over. So I'm gonna go check in with him and see what he's doing for dinner tonight. He had a lunch meeting and he had, oh, he said they split a Caesar, chicken Caesar salad. So he's probably getting hungry. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna do a real short outro tonight. I've vlogged a little bit longer than I thought I would. I guess I've vlogged about, well, I'm at 49 minutes and 36 seconds right now, but I thought I'd vlog for only like 20 minutes. I thought, oh, that's gonna be a short, it's Friday, it'll be a short vlog. I've already filmed five other videos, but ended up filming for almost an hour, 50 minutes. That's not too bad. So anyway, I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Friday and a fantastic beginning to your weekend. Thank you for hanging out with me on the front porch. Um, if you guys are getting stormy weather tonight, I think we are, like I said, but if you're going to get some stormy weather, please stay safe. Stay inside if you can and stay dry and warm. And um, also keep your animals inside because they get scared. And um, pets, whatever they are, cats, dogs, <laughs> ferrets, goldfish. Goldfish can get scared of storms too. And I don't know if they can or not, but I used to have some I don't anymore. Boo Riley, he cannot stand the storms. He hates them. So anyway, but stay safe from the storms and I hope that you guys are having a fun weekend if you're staying at home like me. I hope you're getting all cozy and cozed in. And I love you guys so much and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love you.